please remember to subscribe. It's just one click for you but it helps me a lot creating new videos. Thank you. Please share this video. One of the biggest effects of the pandemic in America is still growing, and that is hunger. Food insecurity has hit 52 million people, an increase of 17 million from before the pandemic struck, and it's only getting worse. And if we count people living paycheck to paycheck, food insecurity is affecting an estimated 54 to 57 million Americans. Last week Biden issued an executive order asking the U.S. Department of Agriculture to increase food stamp benefits and provide more nutrition to children. This is a painful reminder of how our nation has enjoined the global hunger movement as both participant and leader. America has been run like a third world country for decades. It shouldn't be a surprise that we're starting to look like one in more and more places. More than 50 million Americans are expected to experience food insecurity in 2021 due to the pandemic. Our food system is broken, and there's no blueprint to fix it. Some food banks in the nation have seen their funding stall, forcing them to close their doors to families in need as the pandemic continues to grip the country. Census data show that 30 million American households reported periods of not having enough to eat last month, a sharp jump from before the pandemic. And that's not even including the illegals. This is greater than anything we've seen since the Great Depression. Which is saying an awful lot, and that's both in terms of the severity of the need and the prolonged nature of what we're seeing across the country. The Feeding America network of food banks, since the beginning of the pandemic have consistently reported on average a 60% increase in the number of people who are seeking food assistance. And what's alarming is that four in every ten of those people who are showing up at food distribution lines have never had to access charitable food assistance before in their lives. These are such trying times on all fronts. We all need to band together, pray for, and help one another. We are all in the same leaking boat, out to endless seas, without a life preserver or emergency raft. We should band together and help one another, because if we don't, it will be every man for himself, and that can turn ugly. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. America was in the midst of a hunger crisis long before the pandemic. But the pandemic has caused far more families to go hungry, with one in seven households and more than one in five black and Latino households unable to get enough food to eat. Of the 50 million people in the United States likely to experience food insecurity during the pandemic, 17 million are children. One in five children go to bed hungry and lacking access to the means to get enough nutritious food on a regular basis. All this while we send billions overseas and waste billions more in a bloated federal government. The richest country in the history of the planet has one out of five children going hungry. How can that possibly be? And farm subsidies that support the ever-burgeoning snack and soda industry i.e., corn syrup. The effect of lockdowns on the supply chain lags. There is an attack on our food supply, it's part of the plan. When you have no money, you have no job because the government closed everything up, and you have no food, it is called starvation. Mass starvation. That's our next pandemic, a famine, just like in the old days. And it's only going to get worse. So much of what has been predicted for the last several months, mask mandates, rolling out free vaccines for the entire world while destroying the world economy, phasing out of money, immunity certificates restricting freedoms for non-compliant people have all been coming into place. Americans are going hungry, losing their jobs, businesses, and homes because of the lockdowns, not because of this pandemic. Unfortunately, Biden will follow Obama's lead, cut good-paying jobs, and increase welfare. He already started by destroying 11,000 high-paying pipeline jobs at the stroke of his progressive anti-working class pen. And wait until the green energy hits the supply chain. His solution is, let's spend more money, doing the same things and expecting better results. Who hasn't been hit up in the grocery store by someone wanting to sell you their EBT? I have. We live in a society where they know everything about everyone, but we don't know if a food stamp recipient really needs the handout. 
It's a scam like most programs for the poor, designed to keep people reliant on the government while simultaneously shrinking the middle class, which pays for these programs. If you want a taste of what a Soviet's paradise is like, go run around an Indian reservation for a while. Everything there is 100% governmental. That's what is about to happen. We can solve the issue of millions of hungry American citizens and the war on poverty by passing immigration reform, so millions more are competing for jobs and social services. We send billions overseas while our own people struggle with hunger. There really is no reason anyone in this country goes hungry. In those situations, some chronic fatal lifestyle choices are preventing the acquisition of a proper meal. Gazillion safety nets. Food insecurity surveys may not be a good way to measure, and neither is shoplifting statistics. But let's point out the obvious about people losing their jobs. Without the funding from the various programs, they may have gone hungry. We've all seen the images of miles long lines at food banks. If those weren't there, some would have gone hungry. A bigger issue could come from an actual shortage of food. Should lockouts affect the supply chains again, there may be no food in the store to buy, nor at the pantry to get for free. Still don't know how many people are going hungry, they do exist. People are not lining up at food drives for nothing. If you are here, semi, legally, good chance you can't work, hard to find new work, no way to qualify for any kind of benefits, and you are basically in survival mode, and pretty much invisible to the system. We still don't know how many people and children are going hungry. Government policy is the main problem. Narrative weaponization is how psychopaths in government make excuses. They don't want people to be frugal and learn responsible financial planning. Americans are going hungry because of the pandemic, and they are turning to theft to survive, at least that's what they want us to believe. The only way to know if people are boosting at food markets is by lining up inventory to sales since shoplifting is not prosecuted or even recognized except in the most egregious of cases. The whole thing is an engineered crisis. Virtually all government programs are based, either on the number of dependent children or disability. This has spawned a cottage industry not only in baby making for government money but hypochondria and medical dependency. Families raised on government benefits know no other way to survive. Self-reliance and productive activity is a mystery to these people, who are otherwise capable of navigating bureaucratic labyrinths that would drive a genius to suicide. Meanwhile, the system employs armies of marginally intelligent social workers to administer complex formulas and eligibility matrices and super armies of IT personnel to manage multiple massive databases and applications. It's clear that we cannot give away enough food to solve this problem. Some out-of-the-box action thinking is required. Something needs to be spearheaded at the national level to educate consumers on the need to manage their resources wisely when it comes to food. When those commodities boxes go out, I've heard some people complain that they either don't like many of the items or they have no idea what to do with some of the bounties. We have a couple of generations that missed home economics education in high school due to the budget cuts of the past several decades. People have become complacent over the perceived abundance of manufactured convenience foods without realizing that they probably never could afford them in the first place. The purchase of manufactured faux foods is money down the drain. It's really okay to plan menus around thrifty meals made from staple foods, just like great-grandma used to do. I know we can eat well in America on a $1 a day per person, as long as one has a kitchen and isn't living in a food desert with no transportation. Some can do this as a choice, while some may have to do this to survive. If you don't know how to cook, you'd better learn. UBI would be cheaper and less damaging to society at large. Instead of essentially paying the poor to have and raise children in poverty, it would allow those with some potential, any potential, for self-support to pursue that potential, no questions asked. It would eliminate the masses of well-paid government employees needed to administer the current idiocy. Yes, there would be abuse. Trust me, the system is a seething stewpot of abuse already. Simplifying it would actually save money and decrease injustice. The situation is also caused by the fact that food production became centralized, which means fewer farmers produce more food. And those people will one day have enough. Like feeding everybody for lousy fiat money. 
Imagine hyperinflation that would make food production meaningless financially. Hope we don't go there. The food crisis was going to happen regardless of the pandemic. The pandemic just made the crisis happen faster. There is a global food crisis already here, and it's going to get much worse. Currently, there might be enough food, but by 2025, there won't be. Government officials around the world seen the global food crisis over a decade ago. Valentina Zarkova, of Northumbria University, had claimed the sun would experience a rare phenomenon called a grand solar minimum. However, experts have dismissed those claims while warning that we will see increased temperatures instead due to climate change. She is predicting by 2028, 80% of countries will only be able to produce 40% of the food of today. Hungry people overthrow the ruling class. They should be scared of another Spanish Inquisition. Especially on what these elites have been doing to kids. You know who's laughing amidst all this? Doomsday preppers. And people thought they were crazy turns out they were the smarter ones, think about that. A bunker and storage room packed with food and supplies, and they sit this out while the rest of the world face these problems with food shortages. What this pandemic has shown me is that I have to think differently and make changes in my life by becoming more self-sufficient, and by returning to how my ancestors lived. So I started learning how to garden, my goal is to get to a place where I don't have to totally depend on grocery stores. The pandemic has shown me how fragile the system really is, and how society has become complacent. It is a human right to have food, shelter, water, and health care. This capitalist system and society are not working, and it never has. So society has to start trying to think differently and trying to find solutions to these problems and making these changes, so no one has to suffer. Stop buying things you don't need and start a food storage pantry now. Just go back to the basics, and you will be fine. Nobody really needs canned soup, canned veggies, or carbonated beverages to survive. Our society has become too lazy for too long. This is our wake-up call. We need to stand together. We all need to stop complying to these mandates. We are being manipulated, controlled. Just wait until they cull us. Wait until food banks require a vaccine certificate to get food. Start growing your own food before they starve you to death in the coming lockdowns. What's coming is called Holodomor 2.0, the American style. But alas, the American people don't believe anything until they see it on television.